Welcome back to Raspo Farmer. This week the project is creating cushions for the rocking chair. And for my fabric, I have this, which came from a garage sale with a garbage bag of its friends and has made throw pillows, which was last week's video. And then this week we're gonna make a cushion. So we're gonna do a cushion for the seat and then a small pillow for your lower back because the chair's kind of hard and uncomfortable. And in order to hold all the layers together, we're gonna tuft it using some buttons. So these will go on the top and then we'll use some flat buttons without a shank on the bottom to anchor to. So we'll kind of make a sandwich and squeeze it all together. And the idea is to line the pattern up in such a way that the buttons come out not wonky which is going to twang with my sense of order and righteousness, which we don't want to do. So that's how we're going to do that. And then to, for padding, I have some wool batting from our sheep. It's not really big enough to do much. It's big enough to make a baby blanket, but I don't really want to make a baby blanket with wool because then it's not washable and babies and not washable just seems like a really bad idea. So we're going to use it up on this where it hopefully won't need much washing. So that's this week's project if you want to follow along and see how we do it. In order to make the pattern for the seat, just using some brown paper that we had. I think it came from packaging something or another. And you'll notice that the paper is long enough to go front to back and wide enough so this is going to be placed on a fold. It goes from the center to the edge of the chair. And we're going to wing it. The good news is we have more paper if this fails. You need a cat to hold the paper down for you. I do need a cat to hold the paper down for me. I would probably only get a cat to hold a paper down for me if I didn't actually need one. You know, she's on her nap time right now. You can't bother her. That gonna work? I think that might just work. We got plenty of fabric, so we can do it over if need be. No, let's try it. Okay, let's try it. So I've got my pattern cut out, and I've got my fabric. This is going to have to be placed on the fold, and I'm going to need one on the fold for the top, and then one on the fold for the bottom. I think we've lined it up so that we're in the middle of one of the little patterny things. I don't know what you'd call it. And I could try and move the pattern over more but I don't really want to mess with the alignment and risk messing that up. So I think we'll call that good, and then I'll still have plenty left to make a pillow for your back, too. I've marked out, this is my center front to back, this is my center side to side, and I want it lined up on the center of the pattern so that once again, I'm not off center and off kilter and my tufting is going to come out crooked. So we're lined up pretty good there. I'm on the fold. I've got plenty of room for my seam allowance so it can be a nice thick cushion. And I'm just going to pin it in place. Try not to pin it to the rug. cut out some batting and get it sewn together. And I'm doing an extra generous seam allowance so we can make the cushion extra thick. 
and it's a whole lot easier to take something in a little bit than to try to take it out when you don't have room. And I've got plenty of fabric, so we'll just make life easy. There's the first one. Now we're going to line it up again. the pattern. And there are my two pieces for top and bottom of the cushion. I folded my batting into four layers and it's a little skimpy but I also have a seam allowance built into this and I won't need it for the bag. So a little bit will be taken up there and then I have a double layer over here. I'll probably fold in some creation to do a back pillow so we'll see how much I have left and what it looks like. Next I'm going to sew around the edge here and leave a space for the bang to go in once I get it cut out and then I'll hand stitch up the opening and then I can start tufting with the buttons. So I've got three of the four buttons tufted. Thought I'd get some practice in before I started filming. I've centered my buttons in the pattern and I've got heavy duty button thread gone four times so it's extra extra heavy duty and the biggest needle we own and I've centered it in my pattern. We're gonna stab it through and find the center on the back side because they roughly match. I'm not super concerned about being exact, but I do want to be fairly close. So I'm going to pull it as tight as I can and then thread a back button on. And these don't have a shank. They're just flat, so it won't be a lump under you. And we're going to thread it through and then go pull it tight. Cross the button, go back through and through the shank of my button, all while trying not to stab my finger with this thing. I want it nice and tight. There we go. There it goes. So we're going back down. And the tricky part is to stab it through a hole of the button that doesn't have our thread in it already. And not stab your finger. There's a hole. 
pull it through nice and tight. And I'm going back down my remaining hole. And I'm not going through the fabric or anything. We're just going through the hole and out the side while remaining tension and not stabbing myself. it tight and then do a couple of half hitches around the button to knot my thread And there is my tufted cushion for the seat. So this is how it looks with the seat cushion done. And mom and I have both tried it and we are very thrilled with how it feels. As you sit in it, it's going to squish down a little bit and flatten. So it does look a little bit small like side to side, but that should even out. And like it didn't the wool didn't fill in all the corners, but I think once you sit in it, that'll work its way out. Now for the back, I had just enough batting left to do that and have a bag full of scrappy bits to stuff a pillow if I choose. And this is what we have for the back. This is currently inside out, so it looks funny. It'll be about like that. Eek, knee longer arms. Be about like that and lay this on the floor so I can be even more awkward. Gonna seam it along here and then we're gonna move it so that the seam is in the center like so and then do three tufts down the center and then this is obviously gonna be turned inside out. So match and we have enough wool batting. So that is how that's going and I'm gonna go get some lunch. Rocking chair is done! I'm so excited with how this turned out. It's so comfortable. The tufting is a little annoying to do, but once you figure it out, it's not hard. It's just a little bit tricky and challenging with figuring out where your needle needs to go and not stabbing yourself. Don't recommend stabbing yourself. So that's this week's video. If you haven't yet, make sure you like and subscribe. This is the final project for my sewing room. If you, um, there's videos on recovering a chair and making throw pillows and curtains from bed sheets. So be sure to check those out. And next video is going to be a tour of my sewing room now that I've got it all done. So you won't want to miss that one.